In today's video, we're taking a look at how to make homemade mozzarella easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do it. Everything that we use on the video, we're gonna leave a link on the description. So you woke up today with cheese on your mind. But beyond that, you're thinking homemade. Don't worry, here at the Statabox team, we've got your back and we'll get you ready to impress. So this is the time when you can finally tell your spouse, partner, family member, or friends, or even neighbors why you had that cow on the backyard all this time. And the first thing that you're gonna need is milk. And you wanna make sure it's not ultra pasteurized. And the more fat content, the better. And if you could get your hands on some milk straight from the source, some raw milk, or from the farmer's market, even better. You would have a higher cheese yield. And the next ingredient that we're gonna need is citric acid in powdered form. Our next ingredient is rennet. And you can find this in pill form or in liquid form. And our last ingredient is salt. You can use cheese salt or you can use kosher salt. Remember, at the end of the day, you are the king, queen, both or none of your castle. Now that we have the ingredients out the way, we can start the preparation. The first thing that we wanna do is get a container and fill it with one cup of filtered water, non-chlorinated. And then we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of citric acid, which is about 7.3 grams. And we wanna make sure to mix it well until it dissolves. And this amount is per gallon of milk. Next, we wanna prepare our rennet. For every gallon of milk, we're gonna use a quarter of a tablet or one quarter of a teaspoon, and we're gonna mix that with one quarter of a cup of water, and we're gonna mix well. Once that's ready, we can go ahead to the stove with our cheese pot, and yes, you can tell everybody on the household that that's the new name for that pot. We go ahead and pour our solution on the pot, and right away, we go ahead and pour our gallon of milk. We go ahead and mix for a few seconds. Now we're ready to turn on the stove and we do that to medium low. In our case, the number three. And our goal temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit or about 32.2 Celsius. And once we reach that temperature, we wanna go ahead and remove it from the stove. Now you're ready to pour your rennet solution. And you do this slowly, then in slow up and down movements, we proceed to mix slowly for 30 seconds. Once we're done mixing, we're ready to place the lid on our cheese pot. And depending on your rennet solutions instructions, something that we usually don't read, we go ahead and let it rest from five minutes all the way up to 45 minutes. And now comes the moment of truth. Now you find out if that cow you've been having on your backyard was worth it, or if you're gonna have to face the music with your spouse, friend, or family member on the household. Today, someone has to go, and we all know is not the cow. We go ahead and proceed to do the greatest test of all time, and that is to touch the custard and see if it's firm. Another signal you wanna see is a clear separation from the pot. If you don't, you can go ahead and let it rest for a few more minutes. Now we're ready to take out our samurai sword. We wanna go ahead and cut the curd in about one inch squares, and we wanna make sure that the sword goes as deep as possible. And yes, that means do not go through the pot. If you don't wanna wage war with your spouse, partner, friend, family member, or roommate on the household. Now that we separated the battalion, we can go ahead and take this back 
to the stove. And our goal is to take the temperature to 110 degrees Fahrenheit or about 43.3 Celsius. And now you're gonna do the slowest thing you ever done in your life. It is moving those curds as slowly as you can. The whole goal is, is to stretch the curd in this jacuzzi action you prepared for them. If you notice a low curd yield, it could be that your rennet is out of date and you might need a new one. If you notice your curds drain through the colander or cheesecloth, it could be that your temperature is off. You might want to check the thermometer. You can also let it sit for more time after adding the rennet. Or lastly, you can increase your rennet amount by one eighth of a teaspoon. Once we reach the temperature, we go ahead and remove it off the stove. We keep stirring in this slow action film that we're making inside the jacuzzi for about two to three minutes. And this is gonna firm up your cheese. You also have the option of doing this in the microwave. Give it a few seconds and remove the liquid every time you give it some time on the microwave. Now that your curds are looking more like cheese, we're ready to separate them from the whey. And you can use a strainer, a colander, cheesecloth to do this. Remember, this is your kingdom and you have control of it. Just remember not to say it that loud because the last thing you want is to lose your kingdom on cheese day. And this is the part where we want to add salt to taste. And that is about one teaspoon or about three grams. We go ahead and mix it into the cheese. And our main goal in the strainer, colander, or cheesecloth is to remove as much whey that we can. So this is the time where you roll up your sleeves, show those muscles you've been hiding, and let the world have pleasure. Meanwhile, our curd cheese looking friends get to know each other we can go ahead and take our way back to the stove and heat it up and our goal temperature is 175 degrees fahrenheit or about 79.4 celsius and meanwhile we wait for our temperature we can go ahead and prepare a ice bath for our guests and in that mixture, we're gonna go ahead and place a couple of tablespoons of our whey solution on the ice bath. And depending on the size of the bowl that you wanna make, we're gonna go ahead and take pieces from our curd that now are looking more like cheese and submerge them on the hot bath and with hands of steel, stretch our cheese. You can also use two thongs to do this if your body and heat don't mix. And basically what we're doing is dunking the cheese for about a few seconds, bringing it up, kneading and stretching until we notice we have a smooth, silky consistency. The more you stretch it, the better. And if you don't like hot baths, this is something that you do in the microwave in one minute increment. Stretch the cheese and then place it back on the microwave until you get a smooth and silky consistency. Once you notice everything is smooth and silky, we can go ahead and make it a ball. I like to dunk it one more time before placing it on the ice bath. And we like to do that to shock them so they don't know what hit them. And you could choose to do a lot of small balls or do one big one. At the end of the day, you control the matrix and we're just living in your world. Once cool, you can enjoy right away or save it on the fridge for a later date. Now that you conquered the cheese world, you can go ahead and pat yourself on the back for a job well done. You've become a master and you can go ahead and keep that cow. Or if you don't have one, you can finally get one. Don't forget, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone in the Statterbox team or someone in the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching. And here's a link to our latest video.